Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ben. Today I'm gonna to show you how to create the cheapest DIY automated smart blinds. The system isn't pretty, but it can be built for as little as 15 bucks. And it can be controlled from your phone or anywhere in the world. The main requirement for this project besides being cheap is that it can be retrofitted to my current blinds without making any alterations. Apartment life, right? Before we jump into things, I wanna preface that the system I'm gonna to show today isn't that elegant. I kind of MacGyvered it together with the parts I had laying around. So if you think of better ways to do something, definitely give it a shot. This video is more for inspiration than something to copy step for step. First, let's talk about servos and mounting hardware. In my setup, I used an MG995 servo. I got this servo on eBay for about five bucks. If you don't know much about servos, they're basically a motor, a gear system, and control circuitry in one enclosure. They're typically used in things like RC planes and generally only rotate from zero to 180 degrees. However, with a little bit of modification, we can adjust these servos so they spin indefinitely in one direction or another. First, to modify the servo and make it continuous, we'll need to remove the four screws on the bottom of the enclosure. The MG995 servo has three parts. I'm only gonna remove the top part and hold the bottom two pieces together. With the top lid removed, you'll see the gear system for the servo. I'll start by taking the center gear and placing it on the pin inside of the lid. With the center gear removed, we have better access to the main drive gear in the servo. In order to modify and make it continuous, we'll need to remove this stop pin on the center gear. This is easiest done if we pull this gear out of the servo. With the main drive gear removed, we can use a pair of needle nose pliers and pull the pin out. Next, we'll need to disable the potentiometer in the servo. This potentiometer provides feedback to the servo's control circuitry and tells the servo how much further it needs to rotate to achieve the desired rotation angle. Removing the stem is easily done by using a sharp knife or a cutoff disc, being careful to cut the stem as flush or below the top of the gear mount as possible. Then we'll manually adjust the potentiometer so that it's halfway between its natural stop points. This way the servo believes that it needs to continue to rotate indefinitely when a set point of zero or 180 degrees is set. Now we'll reassemble the servo, snapping in the main drive gear and carefully replacing the lid and the screws. Now that we have the servo figured out, let's talk about how we're gonna mount the servo to the windowsill. In my case, I'm working with two and a half inch wooden slat blinds. These have a pull cord that needs to move about a foot from its open to closed position. Mounting the servo to the blinds can be done a lot of different ways. In my case, I built a small wooden frame out of a one x two I had laying around. As you can tell, it's totally overbuilt and it doesn't need to be this strong, but I wanted to use what I had laying around. Here's some close-up pictures with dimensions in case you want to build your own. To mount the wooden frame to the windowsill, I built a simple C-clamp out of a piece of aluminum brace I had laying around. I believe you can get a four foot section of this stuff at the hardware store for four or five dollars. It can be a little tricky to bend, so what I did is I cut into it, leaving just enough so that it still had some structural integrity. Again, it doesn't need to be that strong, it just needs to be enough to slip over the top of the wooden frame and under the windowsill. I used a few old plastic cards I had laying around and used that as a shim to keep it from sliding around. Now that we have the servo and the servo mount figured out, Let's talk about how we're gonna attach the servo to the pull cords on the blinds. The best way I found to do this, using the parts I had laying around, was to find a small tube like this. But any small bottle will work. The smaller the diameter of the bottle, the better. This will allow the servo to rotate more and provide more torque. Once I found the tube I wanted to use, I drilled a quarter inch hole through the lid. I also drilled four small pilot holes through the lid that will allow me to attach the servo horn to it. I also drilled two quarter inch holes about an inch apart on the tube body, staying as close to the lid as I could. These two holes will allow us to attach nylon ropes, which will go to the cord pulls. The lid will allow us to attach the servo horn and mount it to the servo. Next, we'll attach the servo horn to the lid.
Next, I cut two three-foot sections of rope, pulling one of the ends through the tube and tying a figure eight knot. I did the same with the second rope. Next, I'll attach the servo horn and lid to the servo. Next, I'll screw the tube onto the lid as tightly as I can. And that's it. Now, let's talk about control boards. In my current configuration, I'm using an Arduino Nano with the protoboard and a 433 MHz receiver. The system works great, especially because I already had a Raspberry Pi with a 433 MHz transmitter. I wanted to come up with something even simpler. That's why I got this. This is a Node MCU chip, CH340. I got this guy on eBay for about five bucks, and there's a link below in my description. This chip is based on the ESP8266 uh, series of chips. If you're not familiar with the ESP8266 platform, it's not a big deal. Basically, think of them as a $5 Wi-Fi enabled Arduino. They're extremely capable and work great. The great thing about this chip is that the only other thing you need for your blinds, besides your servo, is a micro USB cable and an old USB phone charger, which I'm sure most of us have laying around anyway. Putting your Node MCU chip to your servo is a cinch. All you need to do is put the brown cable on this ground, the red cable on the 3.3 volts, and the orange cable on the D4 pin. Alternatively, if you want your servo to have more power, you can plug the power and ground into these bottom two pins here. This will provide five volts instead of three volts and allow your server to have more torque. You can use a male to female header wire and extend the yellow signal wire on your servo. And I will connect this to D4 as well. To program your Node MCU chip, you first need to go to the Arduino website and download the Arduino IDE software. Once downloaded, install the Arduino IDE software. Open up the Arduino software and navigate to File, Preferences, and place the Board Manager URL that's in the video description below. Click OK and navigate to Tools, Board, and then Board Manager. Search for ESP8266 and click the box that's labeled ESP8266 by ESP8266 Community. This will install the files necessary to use the Node MCU chip with the Arduino software. Next, we'll need to download a library to use with the Arduino IDE software. Navigate to Sketch, Include Library, and Manage Libraries. In the search box, type MQTT and select the box that's labeled Adafruit MQTT Library. In the bottom right, click Install. Now you're ready to flash your Node MCU chip. Go ahead and plug it into your computer using a micro USB port. In the video description below, you'll see a link to my website where I placed the sketch that I use with my Node MCU chip. Go ahead and copy that script and paste that into the Arduino IDE software. First, select Tools, navigate to Board, and select Node MCU 1.0 from the list of available boards. Then, navigate to Port and select the COM port that your Node MCU chip is connected to. Now, in the sketch, you're going to have to change a few things. First, change the Wi-Fi access information so that it has your Wi-Fi SSID and Wi-Fi password. This Arduino sketch utilizes a public MQTT broker. What that means is that anybody can see the information your Node MCU chip is uploading. This isn't really a security concern because the only information you're sharing is the status of your blinds. If you're really concerned about this, you can find private MQTT brokers and even go so far as to host your own. I'll get into that more in another video though. The last thing you need to change in this sketch is the rotation time for your servo. Essentially how the sketch works is that it receives a command from the MQTT server that says open or close. When it receives that command, it triggers the servo to spin for a certain amount of time. That time is based on the power of your servo and the amount of cord that it needs to pull in order to open your blinds. There's not really an easy way to figure this out other than trial and error. Once you have those values or you like them, go ahead and hit upload. As soon as the upload is completed, you should be able to unplug your Node MCU chip and take it to your blinds. Or if you're doing this from a laptop, you can also just leave your servo plugged in and run it straight off of your laptop. Now you might be thinking, Ben, 
These things are cool, but how the heck do I control them? Well, it's easy. There's an app for that. Well, at least for Android, and I'm sure there's probably one for iOS too. My favorite Android application for sending MQTT messages is called MQTT Dash. It's available for free from the App Store. When you first open it, you'll have to add a new MQTT broker. Press the plus icon in the bottom right hand side of the screen. Use the same connection settings that are in your Arduino sketch. In this case, for the client ID, use MQTT blinds. For the server, use broker.mqttdashboard.com, and for the port, use 1883. You don't need a username or password or to check SSL. Once connected to the broker, you have the ability to subscribe or publish to any topic. To create a switch, go to Publish and press Plus. Select Switch and use the settings shown on my phone. For topic, use MQTT blinds forward slash blinds forward slash command. For text on, use open. For text off, use close. For the publish value, use open. And for the publish value off, use close. Now, anytime you throw the switch, your blind should open and close. You can also subscribe to a topic so that you know if your blinds are open and closed. To do that, press the plus icon and subscribe to the topic MQTT forward slash blinds forward slash status. If you change any of these settings in your Arduino sketch, you'll need to make sure that your MQTT dashboard settings are the same. If you don't want to use an app, you could also use a home automation hub. Most hubs these days supports MQTT. My favorite is Home Assistant. Check out my other videos if you want to know how to install it and get it working. It's great because when used in conjunction with your blinds, you could automate them on the timer, the sun's position, temperature, weather, and more. Now, you should be able to control your blinds from anywhere in the world. Congrats. Anyway, I hope that helps and inspires people. This is actually a really simple project and there's not much to it. If you have any questions about this build, let me know in the comments below or on my website. Also, if there's videos you want me to make, let me know what you'd like to see. Well, until next time, cheers. 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 I don't know, sign-offs are weird. Cheers. <laughs>